This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. So let's go through and have a look at the examples attached to our inventory standard IS2. Uh, so the first one here, type of multiple choice question. Uh, we've got the options A, B, C or D. And it says they're according to IS2 inventory. So this is going back to the rules, uh, which two of the following costs should be included uh, in valuing the inventories of a manufacturing company. So when you're looking at the costs, uh, you're looking at the purchase cost plus any directly attributable costs of getting that inventory into its location and condition. OK, uh, so what we've got there, uh, we have carriage inwards and carriage outwards. Ooh, that's a, a blast from the past from the days of financial accounting. Uh, remember, carriage inwards is looking at your delivery costs coming into the business. So you've purchased the goods and therefore you are getting them delivered to your premises, whereby carriage outwards is the delivery cost of getting it to your customer. OK, so after the sale has been made. So your carriage in goes into your cost of sales, doesn't it? And therefore it is part of your cost of production, isn't it? OK, yeah, of getting those goods into the location and condition here. You have to pay the carriage, the delivery costs inwards to get them into the location. Uh, remember, on top of the materials, on top of the labour costs, you've also got your manufacturing overheads. So any depreciation is an overhead uh, and that there is attributable because it is there to do with the factory plant. Yeah, that is an item of plant and machinery that is used to produce the goods within the manufacturing company. So that is a manufacturing overhead. OK, uh, you've then got your general administrative overheads. Uh, they're the head office overheads that has nothing at all to be linked to with regards to the manufacturing. That's just whereby we carry out the day to day business in terms of the finance function, the HR function, the marketing function. So nothing to do with the production of inventory. So therefore, that is not a cost. So therefore, one and three are correct. So does that go through there and give you B? OK, there we go. Excellent. Uh, so that would be a nice, straightforward question within the exam. Imagine if you got that. Great. It'd be the easiest two marks you'd ever get, wouldn't it? Uh, next one, a little bit more challenging, could be a multiple choice question. I think it would work quite well as a multiple choice, making it a little bit more challenging, uh, but could form part of an individual company accounts question. Uh, so what have we got? Uh, it says here, what is the figure for closing inventory? Uh, that would be shown in the statement of financial position. So closing inventory is valued at the lower of cost. And is it net realizable value? So what we're going to have to go through and do is we're going to have to look at the cost. And then we're also going to have to look at the NRV, okay, the net realizable value. Uh, so it says here, uh, Neil paid $3 per unit uh, for the raw materials, okay. So what have we got there? We have a materials cost. Is it there at $3 per unit? OK. Uh, it says to complete each unit uh, incurred $2 uh, in direct labour. So the labour cost that we have. two dollars okay uh, production overheads for the year based on normal output 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 uh, with 12,000 units uh, with $72,000 so even though we actually only go on to produce 10,000 okay uh, we base it upon the budgeted level of activity for our overheads so our manufacturing overheads in 
total they were 72,000. Uh, the number of units that we were budgeting to produce were 12. So our overhead work out there is it at 6. Okay. Uh, it says due to industrial action, only 10,000 units were produced and 1,000 units were left in inventory. So when we're looking to value the closing inventory, uh, we're looking to apply it to a thousand units. Okay. Uh, as a result of the industrial action, some units were badly stored and became damaged. It is estimated that 200 of the units uh, will now only be sold for two dollars each uh, after minor repairs. Oh, sorry, for twelve dollars each after minor repairs of two. So what we've got there. Is the selling price is there as 12 and our costs to complete to be able to get them in a saleable condition are there is it as two okay and that's it there's nothing else there is there okay uh, so what you've got is your NRV is $10. The cost is 11 but just be careful in that this NRV is there as $10, isn't it, for the 200 damaged units, isn't it? Okay. Uh, the NRV for the undamaged ones is the 12, isn't it? So that will be the, for the 800 undamaged units. Now, they will not need any cost to be able to, to get them into a saleable condition because they've been stored correctly. So that just leads us to, to be careful when we come to look at the closing inventory. Because there, what's going to happen is that we're going to have 800, is it, undamaged goods to value. And then there will be 200 damaged goods to value. Okay. So what we have here is that the 800 undamaged ones, the cost is 11, the NRV is 12. Okay. So therefore, we will be valuing those. Is it at the 11, which is the lower? So the 800 will be there at, is it $11 per unit? Whereby, and be careful, the damaged ones, yes, we can sell them for 12, but they've been badly stored. They've been damaged, so therefore we need to spend $2 per unit on each of them. Uh, bringing the NRV down, is it now? to 10. So what we've got there is for the damaged units we have an NRV of 10 which is lower than the cost of 11. So we will recognize it at $10 per unit. If we go through that uh, and tap that on your calculator do we get is it 8,800. Is it 2,000? And it gives me a total of 10,800. So that there is the value of your closing inventory. $10,800. Okay. 
I think that's a bit tricky, really. Okay, you really got to think there about the, the valuation of the damage, the valuation of the undamaged. You now we're valuing it on a line by line basis. So even though it's the same type of inventory, that, that inventory, if you like, is then separated out into two aspects being the damaged and the undamaged goods. Okay, uh, so it does get the old grey matter ticking over. But that's inventory. It, it shouldn't get any more challenging than that. Practice the questions and the examples in the study text and revision kit of your chosen tuition provider. And it should be some easy marks within the exam.